How are you doing? This is UK Fish ID videos. For these series of films, I'm going to show you how to identify various British fish, both from the sea and fresh water. We're going to go through what they eat, where they live, and how to identify them from similar species. If you'd like to learn more about identifying UK fish, then why not get my latest book? It's available online and in local bookshops. There's a link in the description if you're interested. This is probably one of the most requested videos that I get, and that's how to tell the difference between a salmon, a brown trout, and a sea trout. So we're gonna talk about some of the key differences with these salmonids. Let's get into it. So in today's video, we're gonna be looking at trout and salmon, specifically Atlantic salmon. Now you can't positively ID fish from color alone. Fish change color so rapidly according to health, age, sexual dimorphism, stress, and the environment they live in. So color is only to be used as a guide with other more accurate signs. So let's start with the Atlantic salmon. Salmon go through many morphological changes in its life, from its par phase, which have characteristic thumb sized spots on the flank, to its marine phase, which is bright silver. The adult freshwater phase is perhaps the most striking, with a palette of tartan colors, red, brown, black, and gold. Males have a hooked jaw, called a kipe. They can be confused with the seagoing brown trout or simply a sea trout, but they generally don't have as many spots below the lateral line, the tail is concave and the tail root being slim. The body is streamlined and the eye and the end of the mouth match up, while with the sea trout the mouth extends beyond the eye. The body is rounded, the tail is pretty much straight and the body is heavily spotted. The journey from feeding grounds in the Atlantic to rivers can be over a thousand miles for some salmon, and amazingly not all die after spawning, like their Pacific cousins, so some will make this journey multiple times. In terms of distribution, they're found across most of the British Isles, though less common in southeast England and East Anglia. There are higher numbers in Scotland. The par spend most of their time in fast flowing rivers before heading out to open sea as adults and returning a few years later. Perhaps the best known bit of behaviour of any fish is the Atlantic salmon's epic journey from the coast of Greenland to return to its natal river to spawn. It does however get stranger. Some juvenile salmon called par will breed before heading to sea. They do this by sneaking up onto adult fish and rushing in when they're distracted in the act. These industrious little fish are known as precocious par. Now in terms of size, it will vary depending where you are in the country, but around about 10 pounds is a good average for salmon. Somewhere it'll be less, somewhere it'll be more, but they're generally a bigger, stockier fish than brown trout. So this brings me on to the brown trout. It's hard to go through the exact features as some brown trout lack spots at all, and the sizes range from a few inches to 30 pounds. As a rule, they have black and red spots with a golden belly. Like all salmonids, a dorsal fin and a small adipose fin nearer the tail. Smaller fish have a blunt nose, which gets more pointed with age. Following the British Empire around, brown trout have been introduced to most corners of the globe, from New Zealand, Canada, India, and Patagonia. The most genetically diverse vertebrate in the world, the brown trout comes in hundreds of shapes and sizes, leading to different strains to get their own names, like Gillaroo, Sonahan, and Ferox. Brown trout were likely some of the first fish to colonise Britain's rivers and lakes, owing to the fact that they can travel between fresh and salt water. It is thought that some brown trout are triggered to become sea trout when food and space is scarce in the river. Probably the most widely distributed freshwater fish in the UK, it's found in clean lakes and rivers across the British Isles, from Cornwall to Shetland. Often seen as a river fish, it likes faster flowing rivers, but is equally happy in large lakes. Some brown trout go to sea, called sea trout, and will live in the estuaries and hug the coastline. Not fussy in diet, the brown trout will specialise in whatever is abundant, with some developing a shorter nose for eating caddis and snails, while others are more streamlined to take flies off the surface, and some weech gargantuan sizes eating their siblings and char in deep glacial lakes. 
In terms of size, it's hard to do an average one because some brow trout will only get to a few ounces and never get any bigger than that, and some will get up to 30, 40 pounds. So there's not really an average size for brown trout. It depends where you find them within their range. Next up is the rainbow trout. Now it's the only other common trout in the UK, but that's about the only thing they have in common with brown trout. They have a much blunter nose and stockier body. The flanks have a large pink band across it with a green shade on the back, and some have beautiful white piping on the ventral and anal thing. The stockfish tend to be less spotted than the wild spawning fish. In the 1890s, eggs were imported from Barjar Coastal Range in California to a lake in Derbyshire. After five years, a flood occurred which broke the banks of the lake dam, allowing these rainbow trout to escape into the River Wye. By chance, the river has many of the same characteristics as the original river from which they came from in California, allowing them to thrive and become successful spawners. Most rainbow trout in the UK are, however, sterile, being bred in hatcheries and known as triploids, having three sets of chromosomes instead of the usual two. Introduced from North America, it's been stocked into many fishing lakes across the UK. There are only a handful of naturalised populations that breed, such as the one in the Derbyshire Wye. Naturally found in rivers, but they're actually mostly found in fishing lakes in Britain. Unlike the solitary brown trout, rainbows are far more social and can be seen in shoals moving around the water. There is a seagoing form called a steelhead, although these are incredibly rare in the UK. Most trout spawn in the winter, but rainbow trout in the UK are spring spawners, normally around April. The female digs a depression in the gravel, and the male develops an impressive kipe to joust with rivals. Now I will do an honourable mention to the pink salmon, which have started turning up in Britain from escapees from Russian fish farms. They breed in August, unlike our salmon, they're much smaller, and they have a distinctive hump on the back. I've also not gone in depth on the grayling, as they're unlike any other salmonid, and quite frankly, if you're confusing a grayling with a salmon or a trout, you should be shot. So when it comes to identifying these fish from each other, I think the most confusion comes from the Atlantic salmon and the sea trout. Brown trout generally are much smaller, so they don't often get confused with salmon, although it's possible, but a sea trout and a brown trout are essentially the same thing anyway. I also want to make a quick note for any of my American listeners because there's some confusion in some of the common names. I've had this before where people have posted about what a sea trout is. Now, if you're on the east coast of America, then a sea trout is a completely different species, sometimes called a spotted sea trout or a speckled trout. They're not a trout, they're nothing to do with the salmonid family, but they're known over there as a sea trout. And what we would call in the UK a sea trout, they call a sea run brown. But they're they're the same thing. So when I say a sea trout, I'm talking about Salmo trutter, the brown trout, the sea run form, the sea trout. So I've had that confusion before with some Americans not quite understanding the common names there. So to make that abundantly clear, when I refer to sea trout, I mean a, a brown trout that goes to sea. I hope that makes sense. We can't really use size to differentiate them because they both get to similar sizes, although I would say on average, Atlantic salmon are normally bigger than sea trout. However, there are a couple of kind of foolproof ways. So with a salmon, they don't have many spots below the lateral line. The tail is concave and the tail root is slim. A salmon angler can pick up an Atlantic salmon by the tail. You can't do that with a sea trout. The body is more streamlined in salmon and the eye and the end of the mouth match up. This is a really useful one. However, with sea trout, the mouth extends beyond the eye, the body is more rounded, there are much more bulky fish, the tail is pretty much straight, and the body is heavily spotted, especially below that lateral line. So if you look out for those, you can easily tell the difference between a sea trout and a salmon, whether it's in the sea or fresh water. With rainbow trout, They're fairly easy, they've got that blunt nose and they've got that pink band along the flanks and they're also quite a bulky fish. So they're fairly different from salmon and sea trout and you're not likely to mix those up. On a final note to do with hybrids, you can crossbreed rainbow trout and brown trout. 
However, the hybrids just don't seem to do very well. Very few of the eggs hatch and there's no real advantage. The fish don't get any bigger, they don't fight any harder, and you don't get as many fish. So that's why, if you ever wondered why don't they crossbreed rainbow trout and brown trout, it's just that the survival rate is so low. They're not closely related trout. Now you can crossbreed brown trout with Atlantic salmon, but the hybrids are very, very tricky to tell apart. They have a mixed features of both parent species, and they certainly do happen. I have actually filmed Atlantic salmon trying to spawn with female brown trout. So it does happen in nature, but the hybrids are very, very difficult to tell apart. Don't forget, if you want to learn more about UK fish, do grab a copy of my book. There's a link in the description if you want to find out more. Hope you enjoyed that video. If you liked it, please consider subscribing to the channel. It takes two seconds for you, and it really helps the channel out. Go and have a look at some of the other UK Fish ID videos we've got on the channel, as well as the underwater and angling content on here. See you next time. Cheers. If you enjoyed this vid, why not check out this other video right here? If you can, please subscribe to the channel. It only takes a couple of seconds and it really helps me out. I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.